We're going to uh, uh, introduce uh, Jordan uh, McManus from CIDCO. Uh, he's going to present on the automatic error detection of multi-beam echo sounder surveys. Jordan holds a bachelor's degree in software engineering from Ottawa University. He worked as a research technician at Fisheries and Oceans Canada. He participated in various projects such as Maris Satellite Image Processing and Classification, development of a neural network to detect chlorophyll from remote sensing data, development, uh, data development of tools for visualization of Sun-Earth-Moon systems to study the potential generator of the tides and statistical analysis of the global climactic model. Since 2018, he joined the CIDCO R&D team as a software analyst. He contributed, in, he contributed in various projects at CIDCO, such as mobile LIDAR system calibration software, automatic calibration of multi-beam sonar, and error estimation of celerity profiles. Jordan, welcome. Thank you, John. Uh, can you hear me? Absolutely. Sounds great. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, so, um, my name is Jordan McManus. I'm a software analyst at CIDCO, and I will be presenting for you um, our work on uh, error detection in MBS uh, in uh, multi beam surveys. Um, also, I would be. Uh, I want to present to you our uh, workflows for data processing uh, of the LiDAR data and the uh, multi-beam sonar data. I want to present also how we combine both on a single platform. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the open sourcing of MSPAC, which is um, uh, an automatic calibration software suite that has been developed uh, with partners uh, at Chom and Insta. I uh, also uh, briefly present that you are referenced path planning algorithm and uh, uh, connect with uh, Jean-Guy's previous presentation for the uh, detection of sound velocity profile errors. So uh, as for the workflows for processing LiDAR data, we have the software to decode this data to uh, filter the data. Uh, the same thing for uh, multi-beam uh, eco-sounders. We can decode the raw data and also filter it. Uh, we, for both cases, we use a geo the same georeferencing model. Uh, the difference is that for the multi-beam data, we have to perform the sound or the acoustic ray tracing in the water column. And uh, this, using the same model, this allows us to combine both data sets in a single product. So here we can see the data from the LiDAR above the waterline uh, combined with the acoustic soundings below the waterline. Uh, the advantage of this is that we can easily uh, monitor the formation of structural or infrastructure, marine infrastructure. Like, for example, this is data from the survey that was acquired in 2019 uh, at the Port of Montreal, where we uh, compare different uh, vertical surfaces of the, uh, the docks from the, the port. So uh, a survey itself, how it works, we have the sonar which is installed uh, on the platform. We have uh, INS also, which uh, was connected to a GPS and together they measure the positioning and the attitude of uh, the vessel. Uh, this connects into the georeferencing equation like this. So we have the position, the attitude uh, angles are converted to a matrix and the uh, ray traced uh, acoustic um, data is plugged into this here. We also have three other parameters, which are the lever arms. Lever arms uh, connects, is the, is the distance or the vector between the phase center and the uh, acoustic center. Uh, we also have a misalignment matrix in green between the INS and the sonar. And in blue, we have a potential latency between the sonar and the INS. In order to, um, in order to obtain these unknowns, or there are many ways. Normally, a traditional patch test will uh, obtain the, the 
the misalignment angles and with uh, uh, surveying, land surveying techniques, we can obtain the, the lever arms. But we have developed, uh, uh, in partnership with Soman Insta, a solution to um, calibrate this automatically using the data. So we are, can, um, how this works for the latency calibration, um, we, we just need a back and forth line on a flat surface. Uh, we can see on the, on the left what it looks like when a, a survey patch has latency issues. You will see oh, it's sort of a waving pattern. This is because the orientation, the attitude of the vessel is, um, had, well, it, we're not using the proper angles because of the latency between the, the sensors. Uh, by um, we want uh, we need a line pattern that has that maximizes the role oscillations. This is where we can identify the light latency uh, best. So we want um, to select soundings where the acceleration in role is minimal and the uh, angular velocity is maximal. This is how uh, this allows us. Uh, to uh, use an iterative least square uh, on these soundings to extract the latency and uh, eventually read your reference with the proper, using the proper attitudes for this, for each sounding. Uh, for the boresight uh, or the misalignment between the inertial uh, navigation system and the sonar, uh, there are uh, three different effects concerning the first is when if there's a, a, a roll an error in the roll we uh, what happens is that if we scan a flat terrain in a back and forth uh, we will instead of seeing the flat bottom we will see two opposite uh, sloped uh, terrain where corresponding to their error in roll now for the pitch if we do uh, the same uh, if we do a back and forth survey across um, a slope we will see that the slope is deformed and and offset from the true uh, the true grounding. And for the yaw, we also have um, an error in um, in the truth uh, corresponding to truth, where there will be an artificial slope that will be introduced. Uh, in order to get the data that we require to estimate these parameters, we need to obtain two pairs of uh, back and forth surveys uh, parallel to a slope. Uh, the slope needs to be between uh, 10, 20 percent. Um, what will happen then is that the selected elements, so we will divide the, the survey area into very small planar uh, element surface elements, and these will be fed into a iteratively square, which will uh, extract from this the um, the, the boresight angles, which will uh, minimize the error, then we can georeference our data set. We're using this, uh, this calibrated data. For the lever arm, which is the distance between the GPS receiver and the sonar acoustic center, uh, if there's an error in the lever arm, then this will manifest itself. Th this vector is constant, but because the ship or the platform is moving it, it will be uh, this area will be shifted the same way the ship is is, is being uh, rocked back and forth in order to um, get the data required for this estimation we also need to uh, survey along a slope uh, but this time at uh, we're using two pairs of back and forth which are at 90 degree angles from each other um, this will again be fed into an, uh, an iteratively square, uh, also selecting the data according to planar sections, and uh, the result will be uh, an, an, estimated, uh, an estimation of the lever arm. Um, we also worked with a student from uh, Ensta Bretagne. He had uh, his internship in 2020 with us. And uh, amongst other things, he worked on developing a path planning algorithm. Um, I remember seeing in a previous presentation where they were using uh, Quincy's path planning algorithm. 
But here uh, we have uh, an algorithm that we control the input. So we specify the survey zone, uh, the vertices. We specify the line separation. And this is uh, important because for the uh, MSPAC calibration, we need uh, the separation between the lines to be half the swath width so that the nadir of one uh, one survey line points to the extremities of the second survey line. We can also specify the waypoint distance and the start location and the heading angle. Again, the heading angle is also important uh, if we want to specify a navigation path for the calibration. So either we want parallel lines, the paths will have the same heading angles, or we want perpendicular lines, so the heading will be, we'll have to reflect that. And the output is a sequence of waypoints that can be fed into uh, a navigation system. So this uh, completes my uh, description of the MSPAC suite. It is available to the open source community at the following uh, GitLab repository, repository that the SHOM has created. So the code, the source code is available there. Also, there are six reports the, describing the various efforts that were done over the years and the best practices for using it. So we're looking forward to any collaboration uh, in order to pursue work on this, uh, on this aspect. So now I come to the, so what jean -Guy was talking about earlier in his present presentation for uh, detecting errors in so sound velocity. Um, the, so here we see two different sound velocity profiles. And the, when we talk about uh, error, what we're saying is the average error in the sense of this integral. It looks complicated, but in reality, it's uh, just a difference between the two profiles, so one minus the other. Uh, this is integrated across the, the depth of the profile, and uh, it is uh, relative to one of the other profiles. So the integral here is actually the, the relative error, the average relative error. So the way we uh, establish this using uh, uh, sorry. So if we do have two profiles, then we can directly calculate this integral. There's there's no problem, and we have the error. But what happens in uh, in the context of a survey is that we do not have the current accurate profile. We only have the last one we, we did, or others that we did earlier, but the last one is the most recent one. And so we're looking for ways to estimate this error using the bathymetry. And how we proceed for this is we take two uh, cross lines, we extract the data points uh, that are in the overlap of these two points. And uh, using a functional model, which was developed by Jorgen Eck at uh, the Danish Hydrography Service, uh, we can create a, a design matrix for a least square solution uh, using the depth and the angles, the, uh, the beam angles uh, over a grid that is specified on the overlap. And this allows us to extract the uh, three parameters. One is uh, two parameters relate to the average relative error. And the other parameter relates to the vertical bias. Um, so one application that we are uh, looking at is a real-time uh, error detection of the, in the sun velocity profiles. So we can monitor the folder where the uh, multi-beam data is being logged, and we can detect the overlapping survey lines, and uh, if uh, and then calculate um, the, the the design matrix to obtain the estimated error in the S in the in the profile. Uh, eventually, what we want to do is uh, determine a threshold in which we can flag the uh, the surveyor to say that he needs to stop and to cast another uh, to, to to obtain another SVP profile. Um, as Jean Guy was presenting in in the so we saw that the vertical bias associated with the error that is estimated through this method corresponds to what we are expecting if we if we compute the ray tracing through two known SVP profiles. So that 
confirms that it's detecting the error in the profile. Uh, there just needs to be some tuning done on various data sets. Uh, so for, uh, currently what's done is uh, the surveyor will take a profile of the water column. If at any moment during the survey, if the surface sound speed is uh, the difference between the surface sound speed and the profile at that depth is greater than two meters per second, then they will cast another profile. But now we need to figure out which threshold uh, captures the uh, the amount of error significant enough for uh, to justify a, a, a casting. So, um, so in summary, what we're um, what was presented here is uh, how uh, the, the workflows uh, that we use to combine LIDAR and, and uh, multi-beam uh, data. Um, I just want to reiterate that MSPAC is available to the open source community at the link provided. Uh, we present also a pathfinding algorithm for, uh, for different line patterns and the real-time SVP detec detector. And I thank you. This concludes my uh, presentation. Thanks, Jordan. That was great. No, very, very interesting. Uh, again, some more great research coming out of uh, CIDCO. Uh, very impressive. And I can really see how that correlates with Jean Guy's uh, earlier presentation. Um, I'm assuming you guys are working uh, uh, together um, pretty closely. Um, and, and as yes. you also mentioned, it's an open source code. So, well, the the open source is more for now limited to the MSPAC suite. Uh, we have a lot of internal development that is uh, still private. Understood. Understood.